Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Alliance Forever. Today I have a 5v5 custom match here on the most amazing Neuroxis map generator. Let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 in the Northwest, ending with Team 2 in the Southeast. Starting off with Team 1's most isolated player, it is in Chevy Crimson, Mr. Death, going first line as a Cybern. He is a 1400 to his north in orange color orange. It is Deathlock going first line as a UEF. He is an 1100 to his west in lightest red pink. We have Dorset going first line as a Seraphim. He is an 1100. And in Barbie pink to his east is another UEF for team one. It is AF Felix going first land. He is a 1200. And now in the northwest corner of the map in the Rigo Dislet is. Ava Magi going first land as an Aeon. He is a 2,000 rated player, the highest ranked player on Team 1 in Like Oak Tan and in the game overall. So for Team 1 side of the map, they have one of each of the factions at a minimum with a dual major in UEF. So one Cybern, one Seraphim, one Aeon, and two UEF for Team 1. Starting off with Team 2's isolated player, it is in Rust SPCR going first land as an Aeon. He is a 1500 to his south in Batman Gray is LCR going first land as a Cybern. He is an 1100 and in Ruby Red to his east we have Pavel NK going first land as another Aeon here for Team 2. He is a 1300 in Amethyst Purple to his southwest we have Nin Rai going first land as a Cybern. He is a 1300 and in the regard slot here for Team 2 and the highest rated player on Team 2. Is Kampka's 50, sorry, 500 going first line as a UEF. He is a 1700. So for Team 2's side of the map, they have two Aeon, two Cybrans, and one UEF, which means Team 2 does not have access to Seraphim technology. For 10 players on the map, let's take a look at the reclaim still on it before they scoop it all up. They have almost 30,000 reclaim, which means it's a little bit under 3,000 mass per player. And in terms of the mass point layouts, I'm going to probably cut the map probably vertical-wise to make it a little bit easier. So for Team 2 side of the map, they have an upper plateau mechs over here as well as another one right here. Or sorry, Trimex positions. These are what I'm referring to. Another one right here. So three so far. Four up here. Five, six, and seven. I mean, I could say I could cut the, the mirror down the horizontal axis. The only issue is, is that there is a player on Team 1 on this side and Team 2 is over here. So it's a little bit weird cutting it that way. So I'm going to cut it down the middle. So in total, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Trimix positions for our players to grab, as well as, of course, one-ups all around the map. So a decent amount of mass to grab, especially in this really narrow neck of in, you know land right here. We see nice little valley. Realistically, I don't see players being able to control the entire length of this, just due to the fact that there are two upper plateaus here, as well as two on the other side makes it very difficult for players to hold the entire thing. They would essentially have to control the entire environment around it and then be able to hold the exact middle. But, of course, the main points to grab are the western side and the eastern side. And there are ways to access this from the northwest and the south... Sorry, northeast and the southwest. But I don't think you can... No, the looks like the hillocks are too... Uh, uh, cho not choppy, but they're too at a bad angle. I think that's too acute, too obtuse, whatever the word for it is. You could do a distance build, which is what LCR is doing, and then do another distance build down. That is a way to do it, kind of just essentially hop up there and hop down there. Or a transport would also work. Or you could just have one of your players just kind of go through and go to the other side, but we'll see what everyone else is uh, thinking about doing with that. Let's take a look at uh, what's going on with our players. We have Team 1 has all of their players who have left their main base with the southwesternmost player on Team 1 already at his Trime Expedition down here. Team 2, it's almost the same story with everyone except for Pavel leaving his main base. We see SPCR actually in the exact spot that his mirror of Mr. Death is in. 
And it looks like it's shaping up to be a 2v1 here in the north for Team 1's advantage. And a 3v2, at least so far, in the south for Team 1's advantage. Of course, it does give LCR a little bit more wiggle room in terms of he can go down the middle, he can go up, he could go back south. I should, I think he should go north to assist his team over here because this is a lot of territory that Team 2 desperately wants to hold on. And if he can't hold it against two players, it's going to be very difficult to hold the entire corner. So sending another player up there definitely would be beneficial. Probably Pavel should go up there to at least assist. We do see some transports, transport with some engineers on board from him. We're going to go for this upper plateau up here that's already been colonized by Team 1's Eva Magi. And it's just an engineer, so it shouldn't have too much of an issue there. There are a couple of civilian structures that our players can uh, reclaim and grab up for a little bit more mass. Not a lot, but again, something is better than nothing. Looks like as of right now, it is going to be a 2v1 in favor of Team 2, but there are, of course, play of doors set. He's going to build a nice T1 facility right here and move southward. And we do see Deathlock going to move in for the valley here. Of course, he's going to be fighting LCR. So it looks shaping up to realistically be a 2v2 in the south, a 2v1 in the north, a 1v1 in the really narrow neck of land, and then the calm of Pavel sitting in his main base for the time being. So we'll see if he'll leave or not. I don't think so as of right now, but we'll just have to see and watch. We do see Team 1's Eva Magi pushing forward a little bit, moving up to this T1 mech position that's going to be built, but then denied due to the fact the engine the engineer is going to come into range of that commander. Oh, might just be able to sit out of range. Eva Magi probably needs to move. How close is that range, I wonder? Oh, no, he's in range. It's just that is a T1 engineer from Team 1, not Team 2. That would do it. That would make more sense. Sometimes it's hard to remember who is who and what team. But luckily, at least for Team 1, both of the pink players are on Team 1. So that makes my life a little bit easier. Gun speed and range coming on the way here for Ninra in the south. We're going to be able to push a decent amount more in the south once that upgrade has been established. We have LCR has grabbed the entire southern half of that plateau. Team 1 has grabbed the northern half of it. And there are facilities being built on either side of those uh, entries into it. We do see Team 1's comms pushing forward a little bit more. We see Felix moving in to assist as well. And now we see SPCR moving in to support his troops. But still, it's going to be a 2v1. It's going to favor Team 1. So Team 2's SPCR needs to be very careful how far he goes forward. Because the further he goes forward, the longer it's going to take to get back. And that could be the difference between death and barely surviving. Looks like the gun speed range is being assisted by camp in the south. Getting that upgrade on a little bit faster. They can push a little bit sooner. They don't really have a lot of forces, but there was a drop out from Team 2 from a while ago that's being assailed as we speak by a bunch of Mantis. Team 2's comms could take this time to advance now that most of these forces are diverted this direction. But stealth has now been started here for Ninra, and camp is going to be more than happy to assist with that upgrade. Able to be a nice little bit of trade, and Ninra will upgrade will help upgrade uh, his teammate of camps gun upgrade if he so chooses to go for that. Felix pushes forward against SPCR. Again, the Aurora have the range advantage. The comms do not in terms of uh, no upgrades as of yet. Team One Strike is moving in to try to close the gap in on those Aurora. Unfortunately, the Aurora suffer some losses, but are able to get out of range. Speed on the way here for Magi in the west and go for most likely range next and in the south those forces also led by dorset clearing up this t1 land base very nice very cleanly with not really a ton of losses there weren't really a lot of units down there anyways but at least for the time being uh, this position has not crumbled the only downside with this of course is it's drawn a lot of forces away from the front line giving team twos comes a little bit more room to work with and being able to push in just slightly more and it is a gun and stealth comm and camps just bog standard vanilla comm mr death to the north just pumping out a ton of t1 land facilities and dorset's going to claim this position for himself and do probably the exact same thing pings do go down alerting team one that team two's forces are moving in in the north we see sbcr going up against that uh, dual com of gun not gun of felix and magi magi trying to push and trying to probably cancel that upgrade 
Don't know if they'll get anywhere. It looks like the forces do reside with Team 1 most heavily due to the uh, just the amount of them. But a lot of artillery has been launched going after Felix's commander, trying to get him to deny the upgrade or cancel it. That comm is losing hit points very, very quickly. Hey, Felix got to move, and there he goes. Team 1 loses their first play by SPCR's spam of Team 1 artillery. And Evo Magi does have speed on board that commander, but SPCR will get uh, away. So at the 9-minute mark, Team 1 loses their first player, at a f and it's now a 4v5 in favor of Team 2. In the south, Ninra is pushing forward with Camp's assistance. Dorset uh, going to sit down here for the little bit, is going to push in slowly, and all of those Mantis are running into Camp's commander. Ninra will push forward, be able to assist the commander with some, again, retreating operations. Or t not, oh yeah, it's retreat. more just tactical moving would probably be a better way to put it. T1 PD going to be built by camp in the back. Looks like uh, transport did get shot down. Maybe engineers took a shot or two, but looks like they're fine for now. T1 PD will be established to protect these two commanders. ton of Mantis are going to die from this. And Rinra is already at one star entry camp, almost on his way there. He's about halfway there as well. Going to be able to rep up more hit points very, very quickly for both of them. And now that one player has been destroyed in the north for Team 1, it's now a 1v1. But that one player on Team 1, Evil Monkey, does inherit everything that Felix had. So it's essentially fighting two comms, but not really, but kind of sort of with the dual eco now for Team 1's highest with a player of Evil Monkey. Also the air player, so that will jumpstart the air superiority. Team 2's air player is actually Pavel, not, uh, not Camp. He's... That's probably why he's decided to send his main base. He's going up to T3 as we speak. Evo Magi already at T3. So Team 1 has the advantage in the air for the time being. Still Ninra and Camp pushing forward against Mr. Death. Mr. Dish trying to deliver Sweet Death to his opponents. Unfortunately, there are two comms and uh, yeah, they're getting veterancy. Ninra almost at two-star veterancy. Look at that. And will grab it here. So 20% more hit points on the base commander. And Dorset is moving in from the south. Camp is in the yellow. Has to be very careful. A couple of PD are online. T1 facility being upgraded to T2. Probably going to pump out some pillars, I would imagine. Or even some engineers to build some triads to secure this position. Team 1's production facility has essentially not been halted, but it's kind of been curtailed in the sense that they can't really produce a whole lot because they just almost instantly die once they come off the line. Mr. Death still trying to push him with that gun and stealth commander. But Ninra is holding his own. Mr. Death only at a zero star veterancy, facing off against a two star veterancy commander. Mantis being pumped out also by facilities back here, as well as just being kind of walked a little bit, getting some T2 rhinos online. Love to see that. Looks like they are going for engineer. Are those Sparkies? Uh, those are Sparkies. So T2 engineer combatant. Units of the Sparkies moving to the front lines. Love, love to see those. Hardly ever see those. It's nice to see them when they are here. You can see the Sparky has a little gun on it. The field engineer, field engineers are online. Going to start repping up that commander of Camp 2 Nano. Going to use the T1 and T2 facilities to be able to hide a little bit from some shots from Dorset. And both of these comms keeping Team 1's comms at bay. Once that Nano comes online here for Team 2's camp, he's going to be a lot more aggressive. Dorset has no upgrades on board. No Nano, no gun, no nothing. Which is bog standard. And gun will be established just right after that. So while he's repping up, uh, while he's waiting for his upgrade to finish, he's also repping up at 56 hit points a second. And Ninra just trying to push back Mr. Death. Mr. Death is falling below 30% of his hit points, almost into the red. And Ninra is uh, still hanging on there. He's about halfway... Uh, gone with his hit points but the gun upgrade will be finished for camp again he's using that t1 land facility to be able to block a decent amount of those shots essentially a bullet sponge upgrade has been completed giving him a little bit more range and damage and now it's going to be just pushing back here by team two against team one in the northeast we see a couple of artillery pieces on the upper plateau causing some havoc for uh, from deathlock to spcr but not be a large issue there Nice firebase coming online here for Evo Monkey being very defensive. Now that, of course, he's lost one of his teammates, he doesn't want to make the same mistake and pushing a little bit too far forward. But Deathlock is pushing in against this uh, valley in the middle. Wow, I've lost my train of thought there. And going into the main base here for Team 2's SPCR, Blazes are online. 
I don't see any artillery in the area, so unfortunately these units don't get a lot of work done. But, you know, there was a nice attempt. This facility was knocked out for Pavel, but uh, again, something is better than nothing. And more units landing on the southern plateau here for Team 1, trying to be very, very annoying and distract Team 2. Team 2's LCR, I don't know really what he's focusing on, but uh, he's, you know, he's dealing with Team 1's uh, death luck at least a little bit. And Team 2 still holding position. Both the comms in the yellow. Ninma at three star eventually camp, almost at two star eventually. These commanders are getting repped up very, very quickly. And that's just due to the fact that Team 1 is just pumping out units for them to essentially massacre here. And Dorset trying to defend. He has a gun upgrade now online as well, but triads are being built by those Sparkies. Overcharge kills off a Mantis and severely damages a Rhino. But again, Team 1's facilities are being knocked out. PD are being established in the back line over here just for a secondary front line, but uh, I don't think that's going to hold them for much longer. Some missile launchers could come online here for Team 2 and easily wipe this position out quite easily due to the lack of TMD online. Camp being assailed by a PD. Bomby needs to take care of that with a nice little overcharge. Overcharge comes in, takes out the rest of those wall sections, and the PD will be dealt with. Ninra going to be forced back a little bit by those Utashalas from Dorset. And those facilities from Team 1 are definitely under threat. They're trying to keep them online, but they just keep, all right, keep punching, pumping out unit. Not punch. Oh, I guess you could say they're punching them out. They're saying, get out the door. Um, just, again, two-star veterancy, three-star veterancy, almost up to four-star veterancy. And these are mostly Team 1 units, so there's a lot of Mantis that have been built and destroyed by Team 2. I just don't know if that investment's really worth it at this point for Team 1. Cut your losses and call it a day. Mr. Death now receiving fire from two commanders. Overcharge kills off that Team 1 land facility. Mr. Death might just be walked down. And it looks like that might be a decision from both of those comms. Team 1 will lose another player here. 200 hit points. There he goes. And Dorset receives some fire from that explosion. And Camp going to capitalize on that opportunity. Nano Repair is coming online. A couple more shots will kill off the commander of Dorset. Will he get it? Yes, he will. That is a double kill here for Team 2. It is now a 2v5 in favor of Team 2. And this is huge here for Team 1. Dorset says GG. Yeah, I don't think it's GG just yet, but Team 1 going to severely lack on the APM. Everything going to be transferred over to Magi. I would not be surprised to see maybe Deathlike wrap everything in the south and micro that section of the map. Because even uh, Evan Magi running around trying to micro everything is going to be definitely a tall order, especially at 15 minutes. Team 2 can take their time. Team 1's Magi can scale a lot quicker, of course, than any other player on Team 2 due to the massive amount of mass available to him. Unfortunately, he has to micro all of that and can just take a toll on dealing with all of the, you know, all the upgrades, all the units moving, all the nonsense. You do see a nice little, just one little Riptide going down here, taking out some T2 Mexes. You know, just not really focusing on a whole lot. Just send one unit down there and call it a day. Love that play. Doesn't really take a lot of APM. And if he dies, it's not a huge issue. But if he doesn't die and taking out three Mexes, I mean, that, that guy paid for itself. And then some two-star veterancy on that Riptide. He's killed off two Mexes so far. And probably a couple of engineers at a minimum. Looks like Team 2's LCR has been able to at least lock down a little bit of Deathlock's position. T2 engineers are being built. Are they also Sparkies? No, they are not. They are the regular engineer, unfortunately. But uh, there are some pillars outbound trying to go after those PD and other units. A couple of the tanks are already down. A lot of strikers are inbound. The pillars acting as the bullet sponges trying to get those units closer and closer. The artillery, at least at a minimum, to be able to target those Cerberus. And the artillery is actually targeting, or is the main target here by LCR to deal with all of that and he notices the threat and goes nah I'm not going to deal with that uh, that Lobo spam and those pillars are now again just concentrating fire on all of the nearest Cerberus PD most of those uh, PD will be taken out but the position still holds for team 2 so not a huge loss there now we see team 1 of course being pushed back once again by team 2's dual commander in the south and in the northeast, it is Magi versus SPCR. SPCR getting some tactical missile launchers online. But even Magi does have some restorers, so Team 2's northern player needs to be very careful. Again, how far he pushes in. He only has a Team 1 land army. And that is perfect for restorers to chop up to bits. But again, Team 2 has to be very, very careful with how far they push in. T3 land is online. A bunch of Lobos, just not a bunch of Lobos, a bunch of Fervors just running around the map up here. 
Don't really know what that's about, but maybe just constantly getting vision, I guess. Yeah, I guess you, you can see a decent amount, so maybe. I really don't know, honestly. I really don't know. Nice little firing line has been established by Deathlock, and I don't think that position's going to last very long due to the amount of uh, comms and hit points and whatnot on board those commanders. Land army moving to the west, trying to, again, just cut off any sort of reinforcements for anything in the south. Team 2 now owns essentially the entire southwestern corner of the map. And at 17 and a half minutes, Team 1 is not looking good. They have two players remaining. Those restorers have started to push in against those units. Actually going to go northeast. We're going up to the ASF, I guess, from Team 2's air player of Pavel. And Team 1 has air control. Flak is online. Those restorers focusing on those Flak units. But uh, it's gonna, and they're gonna kill. A good, they're gonna get a couple kills before all those black units are destroyed. The only issue with restorers, of course, is their air-to-ground weaponry. It really takes a lot of them to really impact something on the ground. You can see just a couple of T2 units able to essentially hold out against you know, a squadron or so of those restorers. SPCR needs to get some T, no, it's not T some TMD would be good, but also some T2AA online as well in terms of some static. Missile launcher outbound here from Team 2's camp going after some mechs, as it looks like. Oh, the missile still impacts after the second shot was made. And a mechs does go down for Magi. Looks like Team 1's Deathlock making a decent amount of work here on this upper plateau, but there are some loyalists online, and they'll make quick work of all of those T2 and T1 units. They have some EMP weapons, so they nullify couple of them every time they, I think it's like every fourth or fifth shot or something, they fire a bolt. It's a fourth or fifth, something like that. But uh, you can see it's really just nullifying all of that attack power. Multiple wall sections on the western side of the map are going to prevent any incursion from Team 2, but Team 2 is going to be happy with just kind of sitting there. They own, again, more than 50% of the map. Missile launchers outbound going after T2 mixes, trying to snipe Magi's Eco, we see Team 1 at 400 mass income, a little bit more than that. Team 2 at 739. Let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win this game. This game does go on for, I think it's like 1 hour 15 minutes or something. So there is a lot of time left in this game. But Team 2 definitely, as right now, not necessarily the favorite to win, but most likely to win. But Camp is being assailed by a bunch of restorers. And I think this might be the first go for Team 1. Camp pushed forward and didn't have any AA coverage and there he goes is able to kill off a lot of ASFs in his explosion and he actually controlled Keza to ensure that the ASFs get killed off and now team two's Naira is being assailed by those restorers once again Flak is being built as we speak shield is also online and these restorers will be just blown to bits by all those Flak cannons from team two's other purple player but anyway team one at two players left team two at four players left and with that, death, let me know down in the comments if that changes your prediction or not, who's going to win this game. I really do appreciate all the time and attention you give to my videos, so please, if you haven't done so many, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and again, share this video with anyone, everyone, and especially, most especially, your pets in the north. Another attack is outbound from Magi trying to assail SPCR's position. Lots of Titans online able to deal with a ton of those T1 units. Couple of Flak online, not really a huge issue for him as well and SPCR's position is done and dusted trying to build some PD but that is way too late on that front there are a ton of Titans he has the advanced range speed and shield on board that commander the first shield but you know something overcharge tills the first of the several man mantis Titans that are moving in and I feel like he's just going to be shot down and or focused down entirely here by team one's Magi and uh, so uh, kind of being ignored, but looks like the restorers are focusing on him while the Titans clear off all of the infrastructure. And this is going to be it here for Team 2's SPCR. There's no way he can get out of this transport camp because the AA on board those restorers will shoot it down. And Team 2 will lose another player here at 21 minutes. They had a good go over for a time being, taking out three of Team 1's players, but now... Team 1 is coming back with a vengeance. Actually going to continue to push in onto SPCR's position. Armages are online, but uh, there's not that many of them compared to the Titans that are online for Team 1. And is that a missile? Is that a, I, don't know, I don't know what that was, but anyway. Team 2's air player Pavel will inherit everything that SPCR now owns. Or did own, I should say. 
And PD going to be established as quickly as possible. Oblivion's trying to be just again spammed up. But Titans are in the main base. There are a couple of blazes as well. Distracting those units from Team 1's Magi. But Team 1 is going to probably secure the entire northern section of the map. Team 2 is going to secure the southern section. Has already done most of that work. But still has a little bit of ways to go in that regard. Titans again getting into the main base. Taking out all of the engineering support. Bunch of PD now coming online. Probably T1 PD probably been a little bit better just so they can spam that up a lot quicker. But the PD, the P gens definitely should be a focus. Whether the T1 or T2 just to, again, take out the energy reserves that Pavel is now inheriting. Those Titans trying to do what they can. They are going to get to the main base. Harbor just will distract them for a decent while. Lots of PD firing. I don't really know if this is going to go very well. But again, PD online. This is the range that... Uh, PD have on those Titans. So again, able to uh, deal death at a decent amount of range. But there it is. There it goes. So Team 1 will not be able to kick out Team 2 from the northern section entirely, but at least have made a decent amount of progress to do so. Missile outbound once again going after... Actually, no, that's artillery it looks like. Yeah, that's artillery outbound from T3 trebuchets. Team 2, 950 mass income. Team 1 now at 500, so they gained at least, at least a little bit of ground on Team 2. But still have a long way to go to catch up in the mass game. But Team 1 definitely are going to accelerate a lot quicker just due to the fact that those mixers are going to upgrade. Oh, of course, faster due to the fact that Moggy has most of those resources underneath his, uh, his belt there in his back pocket. I don't see any Colossus can start started here for Team 1. don't see any monkeys or any sort of like early experimentals that I would kind of imagine given Monkey sitting at 400 mass, but he is dealing with multiple fronts of assault. He has the south to worry about. He has the east to worry about. He's essentially dealt with that for the time being. It still has some micro that at least a little bit. Don't see anything happen from Team 2. A you know early experimental would definitely open the doors for Team 2 to push in and finally Forest, Deathlock, and Magi to leave the southern section of the map. TMD, not a lot of PD online. This attack outbound from Team 2 might just do it. Units are responding to this. There are a couple of bricks as well moving in to assess the situation. The Team 1P, the P gens are the main target. But they're going after something. I guess Magi is sitting at you know, a decent amount of energy reserves. So <clears throat> not really anything worried about that. Bricks will engage. Brick forces here in the south. And this attack probably will just peter out, to be fair. They'll probably do some damage to those mexes, but I don't really see anything else happening due to the fact that the numbers do reside with Team 1 in terms of T3 bricks and there's rhinos, you know, just kind of crashing down on these forces. Deathlock going to build up some PD as well to assist in defensive measures. So realistically, this position will not fall, at least for the time being. And he's actually counterattacking against... Minra forcing these units to not be able to reinforce their allies in the north. There's a bunch of uh, T1, but again, it's a nice counter to the heavily Percy army because they only have one shot and then they have to reload and they have to fire another shot. It just takes a second versus just the spam of the shots from the Perix. Love how there's a T3 artillery trying to target a engineer and actually got it with the, ex the AOE on board that explosion, so good job on that trebuchet. That's its first kill. Team 2's Ninrod will retreat to his main base in the southeast. I don't blame him. Two players on Team 2 have died. It is a 3v2 in favor of Team 2 still, but you know, there is the whole thing of Team 1 has now gained control of the northern section of the map. Their eco will definitely skyrocket. Well, Magi specifically will skyrocket. Ninra sitting at 520 mass income. Same amount of income here for Eva Magi. Pavel sitting at 300 and LCR sitting at 180 with death at 225. And I hear Titans firing somewhere going after another T2 Max here for Team 2's Pavel. He is the main air player here for Team 2, but we do see that Ninra is getting into the air game as well. So two air players on Team 2 definitely going to assist with dealing with Team 1's air forces, which I don't see a whole lot of. Look at all the mainly right here with this couple of uh, gunships up there. I don't see a whole lot of emphasis for expanding the air grid a little bit, but not really a whole lot. The Team 2 might be able to outscale Team 1's air grid, and that might turn the tide 
here in this game and allow Team 2 to finally claim the entire the southern section of the map. They've made good progress for that, but still have been stopped by PD and Titan. Not Titan. Well, Titan's in the north, but Bricks and all that. Most of PD have been eradicated from Deathlock. Magi coming in with his forces. Lots of uh, brick on brick action. There are some Percy's in the mix as well. Those Percy's definitely going to be able to assist the team with all those bricks. And again, the more kills that happen here, the less units that will be up here, and the more units that will be able to reinforce with Team 1, which means essentially it's just a bunch of mats being dropped on Team 1's doorstep. So Team 2 needs to secure it sooner rather than later. A couple of artillery pieces in the upper plateau to the north, both T3 and T2 able to pump out missiles very, very quickly and wreak havoc on Team 2 supply lines. And those Titans are going to actually traverse down the uh, middle causeway here, the middle, uh, I should say causeway, middle valley. We're going to start to be uh, walled off by these Titans. And sorry, the Titans are down here, the Bricks. I keep calling Titans Bricks for some reason. Oh, Bricks Titans, I should say. See them running around the map. Artillery firing, trying to land near them, but not really going to do a whole lot. May might want to open a door there. Uh, their death lock to allow those forces in. This would be a nice amount of reinforcements to come in and shore up defenses in the south. Missiles are doing a great job taking out the infrastructure here. Team D trying to be built, but uh, it's going to get anywhere, unfortunately. And Team 1 just spamming out as much as they can to hold this position. And we can see those Titans. Are they going to open the doors or not? It's just going to allow this bomber to come in and raid them constantly. Going to take out some shields. Singe it just a little bit. Needs probably like 30 more bombers to really make a huge impact. But the ASF will just sit there and kind of just let it happen. Restore it's going after the transport. We'll kill it off, but the bricks do make landfall. And it looks like the Colossus has been established here by Team 2's Pavel. And is already halfway to a second one. Team 1's forces have to retreat in the interim. You could just have the Colossus stand here and not allow any injury. But I do love the fact that there's just one bomber down here just kind of hanging out. Being very, uh, very annoying. And I don't see anything online for Team 1 of any sort of experimental forces. Uh, no, that is very interesting considering Magi has so much eco to play with. He's just not building it. And he's going to lose a lot of territory he just gained from SPCR. I don't really know about this. I feel like in this uh, stage of the game, you need all this dirt. You need that income to really out equal your opponent team two at 1.2 team one not even at a thousand mass so just continue to illustrate the point that team one needs more mass they need to secure it or they need to knock out a bunch of mass from team two and it's not uh not going good so far he starts spamming monkey lords if the front becomes too unconventional says spcr second colossus has almost been completed so with two colossi soon to be online this front line for team one's spc not spcr for magi in the north will be eradicated there are some engineers roaming around, going to go after probably T1 mexes and reclaim and whatnot, but I don't know if it's really going to make a huge deal. Redeemer will be the focus here of the gunships, and it does look like the Colossus will start to retreat due to the fact that there are no AA aimer by. ASF will come in and target the ASF here for Team 1's Magi Magi, not really engaging those forces. Oh, but they did wait for the ASF to move in front of them. They're not going to go after those restorers. It is going to take a while to chew through all those hit points on board at the Colossus, but, you know, they can be done. Second Colossus is done, and more ASF are moving into Interceptor slowly. All those ASF got chewed up here by Team 1's Air Forces, and that superior, or at least number of Air Forces from Team 2, are going to come in and deal with the Restorers. ASF are going to engage. Good turning here from Team 1, going right in as Team 2 makes its initial turn. Going to kill off some ASFs from that, but... Team 1 just did not have the numbers, unfortunately, and now the Restorers, again, are going to be the main target. Colossus did take a, uh, a chunk of hit points to the face, but lost some hit points on his shoulders or something, but no, he's fine. He still has enough uh, strength to hold up that giant ion weapon beam, or whatever the heck it's made out of, or plasma beam, probably plasma beam. We do see in the south more and more bricks and Percy's running around here for Team 2. They're trying to encroach, but there are Ravagers online now. To make it very difficult to get closer and closer to that front line. And I think I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. It's starting to slow down a little bit. You know, kind of raining going down here in the south. Unfortunately, it will only go one way, and that is Magi's due to the amount of Ravagers being built by Deathlock. 
Gonna make this position very annoying to deal with. Could get an air experimental, says SPCR. Yeah. Awasa would probably be the way to go. They're gonna go for a salvation. Very interesting. Not even gonna go for a paragon first. Usually you only build salvations after paragons, but uh, you know, to each their own, of course. Gunship's moving in. Decent amount of flak over the top. Gonna eradicate a couple of those bricks, but still, the amount of bricks online for Team 1 and with all of the Ravager spam gonna just annihilate any sort of push. It's actually better to allow Team 1 to come to Team 2 rather than it be the other way around. Because look at all those forces that were just eradicated and now emboldens Team 1 to push in where otherwise, had they just waited, they probably would have had even footing. And more gunships are coming online. Spam T2PD here. He is spamming Percy, says SBCR. Uh, well, yeah, he is. Unfortunately, there are two Colossi online. So, honestly, I don't know if that's going to do a whole lot of work, unfortunately. Each Colossus can grab two Percy, so that's four Percy's that can instantly be grabbed by those vacuum arms. So, not really going to be great. In the south, that's where definitely Team 1 has the advantage now. Team 2 kind of kept crashing on their doorstep and didn't really get anywhere of it, and therefore they lost a ton of forces. Left side will die, says Ninra Masmi. But uh, Team 2's air player of Pavel going for Salvation. So he's thinking about how to end the game, which at 30 minutes is a good idea. Batboy is online, and Crab is almost in the green, so even if this position falls, the Crab will be able to assist with pushing these forces back for Team 1. Those uh, Colossus still sitting there, uh, receiving some PD to the base. Probably should move. And a lot of those, uh, those Asylums are blocking a lot of those shots. Bricks are coming in to reinforce his position and movement here from LCR to avenge his teammate of SPCR in the north. Those uh, bricks are wreaking havoc on the production and the staging facilities here for Team 2. But that crap is about to finish. And with the Fat Boy coming online here shortly, it looks like it's a bug just started. Crab is there. Fat Boy is going to take a while to you know, catch up to the crab. And the gunships up here are going to take out all the AA and then deal with all those missile launchers out from Team 1's death luck. Dual Colossus have reached the front lines. And it is not going to go well. Restorers are inbound. And, it, I mean, I think one of the Colossus might die. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, again, they're grabbing four Percy's at a time, essentially. And they can grab those pretty quickly. It does take a decent amount to crush all the hit points. But, uh... And you can see most of those Percy's already have been destroyed. I'd say at least half of them. Titans coming in to assist as well. Restorers over the top. ASF from both teams coming in to try to shield these Colossus. One of the Colossus will die. There it goes. He needs to turn and face the other Percy's outbound from Team 1's Magi. More Percy's coming off the lot and more of them coming in in droves. Team 2 needs to take out their means of production at a minimum. Well, this is not going to go well. It's just going to dump mass on Team 1's doorstep. Uh, another Colossus is online, question mark? It's coming on, almost online. Almost online. Colossus is going to come and go for the T3 land facility. It's not the headquarters, so it won't really matter. And now it's just death and taxes are imminent here for this Colossus. There he goes. He's going to crush a couple of units in his death, but uh, not really a whole lot, unfortunately. There they go. Kills off three, one, two, three, four Percy's and a Titan. But still... It was a nice attack, but the amount of Percy's that were built up are just enough, and it just goes to the sheer firepower of Percy's. They can eradicate any T4 unit if there are enough of them. And that's said for everything, but, you know, I like Percy's, so I'm uh, a little partial to them. Crab online. Bug online. Second crab going to be established. Fatboy is now making his way to that base or where those Cybran crabs are being constructed. Fatboy's kind of slow. I mean, they are fat boys. That would make sense why they're slow, but... Uh, you'll lose if you keep them winning engagements and reclaim. Yeah, I mean, if you keep dumping mass on Team 1's doorstep, they're going to scoop it all up. In terms of reclaim, Team 1 is sitting at oh, six, not 63% uh, more. No, 50% more than Team 1. Team, no, Team, yeah, Team 2, sorry. Team 1 at 180,000, Team 2 at 122,000. So 50% more mass definitely will assist. A lot of that is going into T3 production. 
And team two obviously is going for a salvation, which is already in the yellow, so above 25%, going a little bit slow. But again, it's more of a, it's gonna be a slow burn. It's gonna take a while to finish the construction. Bug is online, receiving some flack to the face, but the crab is also online, and Fatboy is now in range. These Percy, actually these bricks only, excuse me, not Percy's. There are some Percy's here from Death Left, but not being microed up by uh, Magi. Magi is uh, just crashing down on Team 2's doorstep, but there is a bug. It, the tip points are dropping into the yellow. Attack the things that can shoot you first. Attack the AA, then go after everything else. I feel like it's a waste if you don't go after it, but uh, the bricks just don't want to engage Team 2's forces. They want to sit at range and take out all the uh, other little bits that they can. It's, it's not going to go well. Fatboy should start to retreat at this point. Looks like its orders have been given. And the crab is going to start to retreat as well. Just T1 spam. Air staging facilities to block some shots, allowing for a little bit of hit points to be nullified, or a little bit of damage to be nullified by Team 2. And there's a lot of forces here. Engineers need to be on the front line reclaiming. We do see some over here. Because there are orders to distribute and just go straight in. That is a ton of mass. Gunships are online. They are targeting the flag. The T4 gunship has fled the bug. There are some ASFs around it, but uh, not really enough to really worry about. This will be a big mass win for you. You can secure it, says uh, SPCR. I love the arm sharing from the distance, from behind the scenes. The man in the chair here from Team 2. Can you stop putting your poems on my field of... What? What? Um, talking about, I guess, those, like, text pings, I guess. We see Colossus running around once again, but there's an, a, a counterattack outbound here from Team 1 in the north. Pavel will be forced to retreat for the time being. Second Colossus and more of them are going to be under construction here pretty shortly. How is that Salvation doing? It now has a couple of shields. Love to see that. It's actually been stopped. It's at 33% though, so better than nothing. Those forces have been forced back from by Team 2. Dual Crab and, sorry, Triple Crab online with a monkey. The three crabs, a monkey, and a fat boy walk into a bar and force back a bunch of bricks and a couple of Percy's but mostly bricks this is uh, not going to go well here for team one if they can't secure it there's a lot of reclaim here currently on the map there is in terms of reclaim 164,000 mass it dropped uh, 150,000 excuse me that's a decent chunk of mass enough mass for team two to finish off their salvation and I don't know if team one actually knows about it or not no they just know a couple of structures are built that's it your G won't last. Yellow is spamming Percy's on the north front. Yellow? That is not yellow. That is tan, my friend. That is not yellow. Yellow is Pac-Man yellow. And, and that is most definitely ye a yellow color. This is like a... I mean, you could say it's kind of yellow, but... Uh, it's more like a yellow green than anything else. But tan is definitely uh, the proper color, in my opinion. Colossus has been defeated by Percy's, but will kill off three, four more of them, and it's death, so even in death, it still serves. Who is this red player? Spams the map. SPCR FOED. I can't see anything but his poems. Oh, is he talking about those, uh, those text bubbles? He's getting rid of those as we speak, but don't really know why that's that big of a deal. I mean, if they're very long, it's annoying. But, like, hey, there's an SMD here. Hey, there's a new kid. Like, those are very useful, in my opinion. So, I don't see an issue with having them. But I guess he doesn't like how long they are. Now we see three crabs and monkey and fat boy walk into a bar. And the conglomeration of those forces are starting to happen. They need to, they're going to sit in front of that attack line here. Ravagers have a range of about here. And the bricks, it looks like they're going to sit right here. The crabs definitely have the better range. And you can see as shots are coming in from out of view. Where is... The Omni is online, but I don't think... They can't see the... They can't see the forces outbound. I think it's a... Uh, radar jamming, maybe? Uh, oh, I guess the monkey's acting as the uh, sonar and radar jamming facility. Mobile, at least. So that definitely helps with not detecting them. But uh, they're going to come in range of the Omni here pretty shortly, so they'll be seen anyways. Our team one is going to have a decent amount of headache to deal with once these forces come into range. 
I would love to see everything being transferred over to Nari just so that he can micro all of the units a lot easier. But with three crabs and a fat boy and a monkey, oh my, that's a, that's a lot of attack power, a lot of hit points. The fat boy is actually being shielded by a bunch of crabs. So, gonna take a while to really punch through that defensive line. We have some Percy's in the southern plateau wreaking some havoc on LCR's position. Looks like LCR has been essentially thrown, oh, not thrown away, but forced off of this southern plateau here by Team One's Deathlock. So he's done a great job in securing this middle plateau, but hasn't really made it materialize into much of anything else. He's just kicked Team Two out, which is better than nothing, but, you know, still. Team One now outproducing Team Two for the first time in the game. I don't know if that's reclaim related or not, but I think that actually is generational. Uh, no, it's... No it, no, it is generational. Okay. Yeah. Just looked like it wasn't, but it, but it is. And those crabs still pushing forward. Team 1's forces are completely in retreat. And those ravagers are going to be ravaged by those shots from the crabs. It's just not going to go get well here for Team 2. Team 2 has another crab online. So four crabs, one monkey, and one fat boy. Team 1 has no experimentals. What they need to do is get those bricks in the midst of all of those crabs and just force Team 2 back. But if the fat boy pushes forward, probably not the best idea. But uh, and that thing can't attack at range, so it definitely helps with that. Team 2 is being assailed in their main base by the forces from Team 1's Deathlock. Deathlock going to grab a couple of Percy's. Looks like he's going to drop them. No, he's not. He's going to bring him over here. Is he? He's bringing him. Where is he going with all that? I don't know. Fat Boy raining in artillery fire from further away than Team 1 can engage. Ton of flak pushing forward, but uh, that's all just going to die to the crabs from Team 2. T2 artillery says Deathlux. I mean, yeah, you can get T2 artillery here, but I don't know if it'll mean a whole lot, honestly. Percy's are actually being rerouted from this position over here and in the north to down here to assist with defensive measures. But again, the crabs have better range, and the bricks moving in, acting as a little bit of a screening force, allowing those crabs to move in even closer. Crabs, once they take out the Ravagers, that'll be the main targets. Once those are done and dusted, and then they'll go after all of the bricks. The bricks at this point probably should start moving in. Fatboy is barely in range of those Ravagers. More Ravager lines are being built, but I don't know if that's going to be worth it. You can see those Ravagers are starting to be destroyed. Yeah, it is a little too late for T2. I mean, some are being built, to be fair, pretty quickly, but uh, see, this is the range that they have. They can. don't think they can hit the Fatboy. Fatboy's like right here. But the Ravagers have opened up, being able to attack that crab. A crab did push forward. It's going to take a lot of hit point damage because of that. But the fat boy is on it. He's taken out a couple of Ravagers so far, targeting the exposed ones. The crab is actually going to back up, being like, that hurts, that hurts, that hurts. Back up, back up, back up, back up. <laughs> and uh, artillery is raining in on top of those Megaliths, but the fat boy is still in range. And is dealing with all of those Ravagers. Once again, the Ravagers are dealt with. Team 2 will push in with all of those crabs. Is there another crab coming online? No. What's Team 2's Nari doing? He's going for artillery already in the yellow. About 50% done with that. Duke online here for Team 2's Ninra in the southeast as well. So dual artillery is coming online here shortly for him. And Salvation at 50% as well. So Team 2 has you know, one and a half, maybe two artillery pieces here in probably a couple minutes. Team 1 going for their own Duke as well. But that's the only thing that I see. They've done a great job in forcing back Team 2, at least at this position. Dual Colossus online going for shields and then going for maybe Team 1 PD, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what those are off the top of my head. And those crabs have retreated. They don't want to sail the front line again. I don't know if they just don't like the artillery that's being built or not, but... They had the advantage. They just had to wait for the fat boy to clear them out, but they don't want to engage, unfortunately. So we're not going to see a collapse of that southern line, at least uh, at this point. Looks like Ninra is going to play a little bit more defensive role due to the fact that he now has a second artillery piece online. I would love to see some cooperation going between these teams going for that salvation. But uh, LCR is receiving firepower 
or, sorry, shots from those uh, beer heads going after his team, his team, his SMD. And more TMD is being built. Don't think Team One has a nuke. Going after SMDs, of course, are always good to do, but not having a nuke definitely doesn't help with that. Because it's like, oh, I took out your, your SMD, but I don't have a nuke. Or even if you have a nuke, it's not loaded. It's like, eh, there could be another SMD nearby. You know, there's a whole bunch of other things that could happen. And, no. and it's worth it, of course, but I don't know if it's that worth it, in my opinion. You should be targeting P gens, targeting mass extractors, that sort of thing. Like, well, unless you can get a nuke to come in and wipe everything else out for you. That's, that's the trade off. Salvation almost in the green. And once this done, once this is done, I'm assuming it's going to target the artillery from Team One. It's already being targeted by Team Two. But uh, again, it's a two v one so far. Disruptor and Duke. And again, it is two shots controlled by the same player, so it is going to crack the shields pretty soon. Not, you know, quickly, but it will definitely do a great job of doing it. Another shield has been built. And a dual shield's not really enough. I'd say there's another shield. So maybe three shields if you count this one right here. But it's not going to be enough, especially with that salvation coming online here shortly. I don't think Team 1 knows about that at all. No, no, they know about it. They saw it. So they definitely know about it. Shields, shields, and more shields here. And they're going after the air grid. Takes a shot, takes out a mass storage. But that's not really a whole lot to go after. Bug online running around once again. It was the same bug from earlier. And that's a lot of AA. Um, probably shouldn't just fly straight in. And uh, there goes the flat cannons as well. And it goes, nah, it's probably not a good idea. I'm going to retreat anyways. Takes out a couple of those a AA units, but uh, receives a ton of hit points to the face, or a ton of damage to the face, losing a bunch of hit points. I always say it takes a bunch of hit points to the face. I don't really know what that means, but it's just essentially saying, hey, he had a hit points. He no longer does have the hit points because they got taken from him. But they and they got shoved, taken from him, and then shoved in his face. Pigeon gets hit. It's not going to do a whole lot of damage. It's not uh, going to cause a cascade, but definitely going to be a little bit annoying. Salvation is now officially in the green. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Looks like it's just going to be artillery warfare for the time being. Team two being again very defensive because of the artillery that's being built, which I don't blame them. No reason to give their opponent more mass. They can avoid it. Attack in the north might be imminent here pretty shortly. That is a ton of Percy's online for Eva Magi. Oh, that's the wrong shortcut. There we go. Uh, 86 for Percy's and 69. Nice for those bricks. Ninra sitting at 28 bricks, three crabs, one monkey, and one fat boy. Of course, two artillery pieces. Looks like the mass has been... Uh, some of the mass extractors have been destroyed, but the... Duke is fine, but Ninma takes a shot to the side, so he's going to have to retreat for the time being. Needs a couple more shield emplacements online just to defend. And the shield's still holding here for Team 1, but that Salvation is almost online, and it's not going to do very well once it targets that artillery piece. That should be the first target here for Team 2 to go after, especially with the Duke almost being constructed. And no attacks or outbound fat boys online here for Deathlock in the west. And with that artillery raining in, there come some shots, I would assume. There it goes. Going to get some P gen uh, adjacency to increase the fire rate. And LCR is defeated by Eva Muggy. He went after the air grid and was destroyed for it. It's now a 2v2 game. And like I said, that uh, artillery fire should be focused on that artil dual artillery piece. There it goes. It's going to start firing now. And it's not going to feel good here pretty shortly. Salvation very good at taking out shields. Trying to assist the shields as much as possible from Team 1's Evo Maki to keep those online. Multiple groups of engineers assisting different shields. Love to see that. This might be enough. But uh, there are, of course, regular artillery shots coming in all the time. Oh, shield does go down, which means you can't rip up the shield if it doesn't have a capacity to rip up. Engineers are going to be hit. Pigeon is going to get reclaimed so the AOE explosion doesn't occur. Good from Magi to micro that. Gunships moving in somewhere. I don't know where they're going. Fatboy is pushing in in the south, but that is it for any attacks so far on the land. Going to 
try to keep my eye on the uh, mini map to see anything. Shield is down once again. I mean, the shield, the main of shield emitter is staying online. How is the artillery here for team two? Well, some of the air grid has been sniped. D3 air headquarters has also been taken out. So the UEF version of the T3 air headquarters is not available to team two for the time being. But that shield, oh, it's barely holding in there. The emitter to the north, it's barely covered by the other one in the middle. You can see it just barely covered, but uh, that's not going to go well here for Team 1. I'm not dying to Salvation T and Teach and two art Arties, because it being assisted, that's why. Oh, the shields are starting to collapse here for this artillery piece down south. It is being assisted as well. Uh... You say so many dumb things, it makes my brain hurt. I don't really know about that, Nimra. Don't don't really know about that. He was making good points, I think. Can we attack this as Deathlock? And it's a lot of Percy's to chew through. There's only two col oh sorry, there's three Colossus now. Probably if you send a crab up there, that definitely would help with that push. But uh Magi's trying to hold on with this one shield. He's doing a very good job of it, to be fair. But I feel like I think the P-Gens might be something that uh, Team 2 diverts to. He's losing a lot of power and trying to keep it online as fast as he can. So having more P losing more P-Gens would definitely assist with not having the amount of energy that uh, Magi needs. He's also trying to build a Duke at the same time. So not uh, he's not feeling super well. Looks like the Disruptor is now the new target here for Team 1's air player slash artillery player second disruptor is coming on on here how can that shielding stop two artilleries and one salvation again he's being assisted isn't all maxed out on t3 p gens and he has mass to pour on top of build power i mean that's true he does have mass but the shields start look like they have broken taking out one of the artillery pieces it finally just broke I think that might do to the fact that uh, Magi might have had... Yeah, it looks like he might have had some power issues there for a second. It can't win stalling, I guess. Yep. And trying to do what they can. The engineers keeping that uh, shield online. Just a blip. That's all Team 2 needed. One of them has been destroyed. The element being built was annihilated. You should get more PD. Yeah, definitely get more PD up there just in case Team uh, 1 assaults. And look at this line of Percy's. <laughs> Have at thee. Essentially the Helm's Deep over here. Or, no, not Helm's Deep. The the Rohan uh, cavalry from Return of the King on that hill. That's what this reminds me of. While the elephants are over there. <laughs> uh, that is a, a lot of Percy's. That is way, way too many Percy's. The Percy's, oh, they're moving in. They are moving in. We might see an attack. They're going to move in closer to those uh, Colossi, so we might see an attack outbound. I mean, Team 1 still has one of those uh, Dukes online. Second one is, uh, you know, halfway to being built almost. The Team 2 lose, they did lose a Disruptor, so they've lost one of their artillery pieces. It's got to hurt. So, uh, satellite is being built as well. Pavel has been targeted on these either by accident or on purpose. Shields are going down. Needs more needs more shielding, my friend. He does have his own personal shield, but you need to shield the things around you. That salvation is not necessarily the only reason why he's still in the while they're still in the game, but uh, definitely a, a nice benefit due to the fact that of course the artillery have been focused on. Team 2's artillery for the time being and not all the infrastructure from Team 2. Vampire pushing in a little bit to the south. Looks like he's going to retreat. Probably a good idea. Doesn't want to be caught unawares. And all of those units are moving in. I would love to see Deathlight give over everything he has. But in terms of Percy counts, we're sitting at 51 here from Death. And 86 here, so 130 plus against 4 Colossus. Is this going to be enough? Oh, here it comes. Swarm the front line. Swarm them, boys. Swarm them. And they're moving in. Coming into range here. 
two arms per Colossus. Eight of the Percy's can be grabbed. PD also slightly in range to the east. More are being transported as we speak. The Colossus had a lot of shields around them. They've lost them. And there are some bricks nearby. All the Percy's not focusing on one shot. Looks like they're going to travel northward. More PD going to be used as uh, again being built. But this wall of defenses will collapse. Second one has died. Two more remain. And that's not going to feel good for those last remaining Colossus. PD are not going to be enough to stop this Percy push. And there it goes. The overwhelming firepower of the Percy's are shown. Nuke is launching this time from Team 2's player of Pavel NK going after this position of the Ravagers. That probably would have been useful when the Percy's were still there, to be fair. But uh, the last of the Colossus have been defeated. The AA is in a full retreat. Nuke is outbound. Team 1 has an SMD over here. It is loaded. Five anti-nukes in the clip. And there it goes. It's going to land. It's Continental School. No, not that way. Not that way. Go, don't go that way. And there it goes. Takes out uh, a couple of units over here, it looks like. But that is it. Kaboom! Team 1 will now secure the reclaim field in the north. And that is a decent amount of reclaim. Let's see. How far can I go before it cuts me? About 145,000 on screen. Uh, and in total, 235. So more than... 50% of the mass located just in a small section of the map to the north. Artillery is still raining in here from Team 2 and Team 1. Team 2 has two satellites online. Salvation and an emissary coming in line here pretty shortly. Disruptor being built once again here by Ninra. Actually, the Salvation is focused on other elements going after mass fabs, P-Gens, that like. But not uh, that sort of thing, not the like. Oh, and the like. That's the phrase. Wow, my brain, for some reason, not wanting to say that phrase for me. And, uh, not really doing a whole lot with that salvation. But two artilleries online here for Team 1. They're still targeting that salvation. And shields, uh, they're kind of holding. Sort of, kind of. Now the PGN being built to be able to increase the fire rate on board that, uh, salvation. Attack in the south going to commence. There is a bunch of shielding, a bunch of artillery, a bunch of T1 P gens to assist with the uh, well, fire rate of those Gunthers. No PD, very weird. A bunch of TMD. And no, no PD, very weird. But this force of bricks is not going to get anywhere. There are four crabs here and a monkey and a fat boy. And they have the range advantage, most definitely. Team 1 now invading in the north. Nuke, two-thirds the way loaded to another one. Team 2 has no defenses in the north. Artillery retasked onto those dukes. The satellites focusing on the P-Gens, it looks like here from Team 1's Deathlock. Deathlock, how is your energy consumption going? Not great. It's not going great. He's trying to balance it out, but uh, kind of struggling to do so. And, uh, I mean, the Emissary is in the yellow now, so 25%. More shielding coming online here. P-Gen not built for some reason. More shielding looks like is the primary focus. Probably the best idea there from Pavel, going after protection versus fire rate on that regard. So it's going to be very useful in constantly giving pressure to the emitters. This emitter, I don't think it's actually uh, going to be able to be targeted due to the fact the shield barely covers it. Another satellite online. Uh, their artillery's mass should work. Might be better off targeting his mexes. Problem, says Pavel. Yeah, well, uh, yeah I've noticed that <laughs> the caster has noticed it's been a problem for a little bit. Nuka uh, is still loading. And Colossus are being built as we speak. There is one in defense mode, but there's not a lot. Gunships. Something needs to be sent to this front line to assist. Missile's going to start raining in artillery as well. Team 2's eastern side is going to collapse. It's not an if. It's not about if. It's about when. Spy planes over top getting a nice readout on what's going on that side of the map. Looks like the uh, Salvations are targeting all of the P-Gens that are being built here for EVA so we can diminish the shields. Because if you have no P-Gens, then you can't uh, 
have any shielding because you have no energy to run said shield, so it works. He has 33, 30, 30, 33,000, so realistically it's going to take a while. The true through 11,000 reclaim says uh, SPCR. Monkey? Oh, is it one of those like the monkey was being built but then got destroyed for some reason? PD, that initial line of PD still being very useful in defending. Colossus pushes forward, goes after the Perseus, but uh, doesn't really go very well here for him. Lots of flak over top going to prevent any incursion from some gunships. Maybe a T1 bombers at a minimum might be useful for this just because they are going to die, but at least they could deal some damage. And the nuke is definitely going to be the most important thing for Team 2 to protect. Killed off 74,000. The first nuke of the game. And three dukes are online. Tons of build power here for Eva Magi. And one Deathlock as well. Building some engineering stations to assist. The SMD actually might be the better target as well. Just to take everything out. Artillery lands right north of that. You could kill his headquarters. Yeah, you can, but... It's not really going to do a whole lot. At least it'll prevent construction of engineers, but at this point he has all the engineers he needs. Colossus pushing forward, going after those missile launchers. And the Percy's are being forced back by Spectres to the northeast. ASF's going to be called to deal with that. Maybe if your artillery is all synchronized. I mean, maybe, but... Shields? Oh, shields! Oh! Uh, it was, it's, it's close. I could... Like, probably one or two more satellites would be enough. And there's just so much assistance going down, it just doesn't even matter. This is so many. So many engineers. That's so many engineers. Salvation fire raining in. Satellites over top. We can kill this, says Deathlock. I'll take a look at that, what he means in a second. It's just... So many engineers. Two, three dukes is a lot of firepower. Keeping that shield online. Just amazing. Okay, what would the deathlock mean by that? Yeah, you can kill that. Firing my three artillery now. One, two, three. Two of them are disruptors. One of them is a duke. It looks like Ninwes lost one of his satellites. Needs more shielding. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though. There's so much build power here. Mm. Oh, Deathlock almost took an artillery <laughs> shot to the face, but uh, Shield came back online at the last second. Emissary, emissary would definitely do it. I think if Team 2 got an Emissary, it would be enough. With that secondary pulse that it does, that could be enough to keep that... Uh, Keep the shielding offline just enough for the artillery to come in once again. It w did it. It was able to take it out initially. It took out two of the well, one and a half technically, of the dukes, but uh, just can't seem to materialize. Team One's main focus is here. It leaves the land open. They are still engaging. If Team One was a little bit more focused on land, they probably could have pushed at least the northern side by now, but uh, not really focused on it. At least missile launchers. Missile launchers launching some missiles going after Team D. It looks like actually hits a Spectre gunship out of the sky. 80 Percy's over here. There's a lot of Percy's here for Team 1, but Team 2 has built up two Colossus and has more PD. Needs to get more PD. Just build as much PD as you can, essentially, at this point. Doesn't even matter, you know, where it is. Just build it. You can shoot with it. Engineers trying to huddle around this one shield for warmth. And satellite still isn't enough. Looks like the second satellite's been knocked out. There's only one remaining. And uh, Ninra going for a teleportation. I don't think does Team 1 have teledefense? Oh, no, they have a lot of teledefense. But what's the range on this? So Team 2's uh, Ninra could teleport right here on the edge. Go after Deathlock. Get the P-Gens to ca actually take out the shielding. That'd be the main thing. And then... Uh, that would probably end the game right there. Definitely would get Deathlock and then Engagement. Kill off all of the Engineers in the explosion of a comm. So at least at a minimum that would happen. He is Cybrin, so he can do the Telemazer defense. And Team 2's Pavel 
Uh, the other player remaining. Base is being ripped to shreds. He needs more shielding over here. Just more and more shielding. I'm going to speed it up again just because not really a whole lot's going on. Especially the southern side is essentially just null and void of everything. And the Percy attack looks like it's starting to materialize. Again, I feel like Deathlock should handle all of the land so that way Eva Magi can focus on the artillery and all of the other things that he's focusing on. Missiles launching once again. Going after, I think, the... Um, I don't know what it's going after. Defenses, I guess, taking out some TMD. Not all of them make it through. Two crabs online here for Team 2 as well as three Colossus with the additional support from the crabs. I don't think these Percy's... They're going to get close, but I don't think they'll get that far. Did they take it from here? They, they took two of the crabs from over here and walked them all the way over to the Strategic north. Launch. That's how much time they've had. Nuke outbound. Where is it going? Is it going to go just after the Percy's and just deal with that? Duke being built up over here, very interestingly. Uh, it looks like it's going west. It's going for this base in the southwest. Um, that's gonna hurt. Looks like it's going after the art the P gens. It looks like not entirely, but it's going just going out after the base. Ravagers are being built by Deathlock to protect as well. There it goes. It's gonna land. Second nuke of the game. Cup <laughs> takes out everything. Almost that Ava Monkey had. The Ravagers are fine, but everything else is gone. And how much mass did that new kill off? 195,000 in total, so it was 120,000 mass killed off. The Percy's now fleeing due to the crabs. Two of the Colossus are dead, but the main threat has been dealt with for Team 2. It was those Percy's. Does that provoke a response? No, the units actually fall back and kind of just hang out there. Team 2's been perfectly fine. They could probably expand down here a little bit. They really, really wanted to, but they probably have, I mean, one hour plus. Definitely have Subcom on the brain. Shields are falling. Hives are being built to assist with defensive measures, but shields are fully down. More shields need to be built, but these two disruptors are going to go down. They haven't fired as of yet. Pigeons. Oh, engineers. Luckily, the Pigeons weren't... Uh, two of them weren't killed off initially, but one more volley, and that might do it. Looks like uh, Minra going to rebuild his uh, satellites once again. Shield needs to come back online for these artillery pieces or Team 2 is not going to feel good about that. Yep, there they go. Where are the... Dukes aren't firing. Have the Dukes changed targets? The Dukes are going after the Nuke. The Nuke is going to be killed off. Direct shot by that artillery piece. Good move. Could have easily killed off those disruptors, but uh, definitely uh, missed opportunity there. But they took out the Nuke, so that, that is something, I guess. Another Duke, of course, being built in the north. Actually, looks like it stopped. More Ravagers are being built. But again, those crabs. Not really going to assist with dealing with that. Looks like now Pavlos is going to receive a ton of firepower to the face. Artillery targeting the base here for Deathlock. Shield says SBCR. Yeah, needs more shield. Definitely SBCR deserves the man in the chair war trying to help his teammates with what's going on. Whether it, you know, say, hey, get some shields. Hey, this is what's going on. You need to ring the... Salvation. The salvation was taken out. Excuse me. No wonder the disruptor, the dukes are focusing on something else. That gonna hurt. Now the salvation is gone. The nuke is gone. Team one in a better position to win this game now. That's gotta hurt. Team two had that uh, online for so long. And how is that uh, telemazer doing? It's now at uh, say 80% most likely. That's ah, not. It's not gonna feel good. OP. What? Ravagers in range of those crabs. Crabs going after the P-Gens. And that's a lot of Ravager fire. Colossus is going to just stand there and take all of it. Uh, it's got to hurt. Lots of PD going down now. Engineers actually becoming the targets now, so they don't produce any more T3 Ravagers. That wide over top going after a ton of kennels, it looks like. That's its main focus, is taking all these kennels. <laughs> no engineering support here for Deathlock. No engineering support. But, uh, yeah, Team 2 will be forced back. Just going to give Team 1 more time to build up defenses at that point. And these uh, dis disruptors are the main target now. Shield is offline. 
Emissary is now the primary focus. If Team 2's Ninra can build that uh, Telemazer and can kill at least one of the two players, that would probably do it. And let's speed it up once again because it's kind of slowed down once again in this game. It's kind of been a lot of ebb and flow, like some action kind of slow, some action kind of slow. It's not like a high octane the entire time. Looks like, I don't know what they're targeting for Deathlock, but they're not hitting their targets. Let's see, Ninra, is your teleportation unit done yet? Not yet. And the base here for Pavel is being annihilated by those three dukes. Give up on the Salvation, use its mass to build teeth artillery, and take back North Mexes. Yep, definitely the better way to do that. Spy planes over top, gonna get a nice readout here for his teammate. I'm gonna see exactly what's going on. Teleportation is done, took 429 seconds to build. And will you teleport automatically is the question. Uh, the longer you wait, the more time those dukes have time to ravage this position. AA being built to defend. More AA being built. Looks like Team 1's faring a sort of bomber incursion. Especially when they're clearing the way down here. Looks like the land army will start to push in a little bit here on the southern side. More Percy's being delivered to the southwest to shore up defenses over there. The disruptors targeting the artillery over here. Very interesting play. Looks like this salvation is still a primary uh, focus here for those dukes. So it's a little bit of a distraction. That was a little bit more time for Team 2 to think about what they're doing. And the shields are down around those ravagers. And those bricks pushing up once again. Team 2 is attacking on both fronts, both in the south and in the northeast. They're not pushing in as much as they probably should. Ravagers are the only concern down there. Well, all the bricks too, but Ravagers are the more annoying of the two. We'll take out some AA over on that uh, upper plateau. But constantly delivering Percy's to the south, it looks like. That's the main focus. That on over top, gonna give a constant vision here for Team 2. Will they teleport in or will they not? I mean, you built the Telemazer Commander, you might as well go for it at some point. Uh, Pavel, can you get some Aeon Shields on the Cybran Artillery? Uh, I mean, something. Looks like some shields are gonna be built, but is it gonna be too late? Third Disruptor is being built as we speak. Uh, it's gonna be close. Attack in the south has diminished. Looks like it was going to happen, and then they all retreated. Don't really know why. Looks like engineers, not engineers, Percy's being shoveled back to the front lines in the north. Constantly just delivering Percy's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. How are the uh, disruptors doing? Well, they've lost the P-Gen, but uh, that's better than losing the entire artillery piece, so that is something. Linra still isn't teleporting. Very, very interesting that he's not teleporting. One hour, ten minutes on the clock. Yellow is diverting NGs to rebuild mexes. Yeah, you would assume that, so he has more mass. But that has been a target here for Team 2's satellites. That's usually what a lot of people use the Novaxes for, is targeting all the mexes. Because your opponent can't build anything if he doesn't have mass to build with. Now artillery is focusing on this position in the south. Once this position crumbles, I don't know if Team 1 has the defenses on the ground. No, I don't think so. Could go back to focusing his artillery. His eco is down. He's lost nine T3 mixes. Yeah, I mean, he has lost nine T3 mixes. Team 1 has fallen bo below 1,000 mass income. But uh, those crabs to the northeast and Colossus, it's going to be, again, the last bastion of hope for Team 1 is right here. Teleportation might be on the cards here. Maybe he's waiting for those uh, crabs to come into range a little bit sooner, or a little bit closer, I should say honestly put pressure on everything on the ground. Team 1 had a really good strategy, just essentially focus all of Team 2's attention on this position, which they've done a very good job of, but they let the land fall because they let the land kind of diminish. They had, an, they had an ability to go after this position at a minimum, but just didn't do it. No, Ninma really does not like SPCR trying to help. And crabs being assailed by Percy's, but crabs are retreating. Colossus moving in to assist. More Percy's being delivered to the north. Actually, no. 
Just everything's being delivered to the north. And those units that have been sitting in wait for a very, 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 very long time have finally been given orders to move northward. And now artillery is actually going to land near the crabs. Did the disruptors get killed off? No. Third disruptor coming online. So And an emissary as well. So Team 2 has four artillery pieces. Going to have a fifth here pretty shortly. Not including the emissary that they once had. But the shields are going to start to collapse here. Just due to the emissary dual fire. Meaning the initial shot and then the, of course, the pulse that happens. Focus the ravages first. Those crabs. And uh, crabs are pushing forward, but T3 artillery with, you know, units that can move very quickly, or at least relatively not be that great. The only attack is going after the air. So Team 1's air player of Magi losing air power just due to artillery fire. That's going to hurt. Don't know if that was Team 2's goal or not, but definitely got some shots up because of that. Satellite's over top. I'm going to slow it back down to zero speed. And three satellites over top. One, two, three, four, five artillery online. And the salvation was given up on. But it was a good strategy, though. I definitely would agree with that. Just probably needed one more artillery piece to really crack the shielding. And it doesn't help that there were so many engineers being built to assist uh, the measures over here. Crabs coming in from the east. Artillery from the, the skies. Two crabs to the south. And a monkey and a fat boy. Those crabs that were built a long time ago now coming in to play their part. One crab will be, I think, defeated by the time it gets to that uh, artillery piece. Your strongest player was SPCR. He was so cancerous. I don't know about that. GG says SPCR. I don't really know about that anymore. We would definitely disagree. You can see that pulse that you know, does damage and then shoves it back a little bit. And the shields are down. Hegens are collapsing. It was a good fight, Team 1. You definitely were very close to victory, unfortunately. Target the Pigeons. Like, make them explode. Evil Monkey takes a shot to the face. Tons of engineers going down. Percy's trying to do what they can to force the Colossus back. T1 PD going to do what they can. It's just going to collapse on top of a ton of engineers here. And all of the artillery is going to be done and dusted. There it goes. Death luck. Takes an AOE explosion vault out to the face. And that is it. It's no fun and seems game breaking to be able to counter so many artillery. No, it's not. It's not kind of dumb. It's it's the whole point. Like the whole point of engineers is to assist with whatever they're doing. That is a legitimate strategy, it's not dumb. You just needed more firepower. And you could have done the exact same thing, and he was starting to do it with his hive, so. I mean, you can't say something's dumb if you're just going to use it yourself kind of thing. He wasn't really countering. He just had a lot of eco and build power. Yep, that's definitely what it was. And Deathlock is the last remaining player. Magi control case. And there goes the emissary fire. This guy just won't shut up. Jeez, man. Like, he's like, you're dead. You can't talk. I'm like, you don't want a player to assist you from a position where he doesn't have to worry about a whole lot besides just saying pointing something out to let you know. That's kind of not... I don't really like that. I don't, I don't like that. Deathlock still not being targeted. Just the crab's just ignoring him at this point. I just had just did not have enough eco says Deathlock. Yeah. I don't know. Again, the land was definitely something that could have easily been won by Team 1, especially in the, you know, the northeastern side, but just wasn't a primary focus and didn't use the advantage when they have it. They're just ignoring the comm. Is the comm just sitting there? They know where he is. And there he goes. Yeah, maybe he just wanted to control K. Who knows? But uh, there it goes. The last ring play on Team 1. Team 2 wins the game. Honestly, I feel like MVP might just go to SPCR. He was trying his best, even after he died, to just assist his teammates and saying, hey, this is what's going on over here. Hey, you should put something over here. Hey, you should do this. That sort of thing. Ninma was just not having it. None wanted no assistance. He, his team still won, but I don't know. I don't really like the... My teammate is trying to help me from beyond the grave, but I don't want them to talk, so I'm just going to constantly tell them to shut up. Not really that helpful or useful. So, I mean, the Salvation was a really good play. Too bad they couldn't really make it materialize, but I think 
I don't know. I really don't know who to give MVP to besides maybe SPCR for being the man in the chair. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this match. And overall, thank you so very much for watching. Please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And of course, share this video with anyone, everyone, and especially your pets. And I will see all of you in the next one.